Uh, I'll ask uh, questions about seeing Rouhani as a, as a moderate, Russia's role in, in Syria, and what will Iraq do. Ambassador Bolton, you said that those who have been labeling Rouhani as a moderate are naive in their assessment, and uh, Mr. Dubowitz, you agree that Rouhani isn't the moderate that the world is so eager to say he is, yet the administration has been willing to uh, accept the narrative of, of him as a, as a moderate, and he's even begun to offer concessions on sanctions against the regime ahead of its next uh, failed round of uh, P5 plus 1 negotiations. And just this morning, the Institute of, on Science and International Security assessed that Iran is expected to achieve the critical capability needed to produce weapons-grade uranium by mid-2014 without being detected. So as Iran continues to support Assad by reportedly agreeing to supply Assad with $3.6 billion in oil in exchange for the regime to have the right to investments of various kinds in uh, Syria, I think it's wise to be reminded that in the past, this so-called moderate has boasted of his ability to deceive, as you pointed out, and mislead the international community on Iran's nuclear program when he served as the chief negotiator, and he continues to support the brutality of Assad. Given what we know about Rouhani and these latest reports, why uh, would the United States risk our national security and the security of the region by offering concessions to the regime when it is clear that there will be no change in Iran's nuclear position and, and its role on Syria? Uh, and will the administration, do you believe, now use Iran, uh, allow Iran to use Syria as a bargaining chip for its nuclear program? That's what I see in the horizon. Now, on Russia, along with Iran and, and uh, China, they've been flooding Syria with arms uh, for the Assad regime. It has a key strategic interest in selling arms to Assad, having access to all of that region through the Syrian naval base. Um, Moscow has moved to stonewall U.S. efforts in calling uh, for Assad to step down, continues to obstruct uh, our sanctions against Syria and Iran. It's got its veto power at the Security Council. So it's clear that the administration's reset policy with Russia has not resulted in any progress whatsoever. It has actually weakened our position relative to Moscow. Uh, so given this, in light, of, in light of this and Russia's continued cooperation with Assad and with Iran, what steps should the United States take regarding our policy uh, toward Russia? And on Iraq, uh, we've, been, we've been saying that uh, we've called on Iraq to, uh, to act and stop and inspect the planes that are, that are routinely uh, flying um, militants and militia to fight alongside Assad. Uh, but in only a few cases has Iraq uh, actually done this inspection. And uh, in addition, the Iraqi government continues to ignore a request to honor its, its commitment to uh, protect the people of Camp Liberty through its memo of understanding of 2011 and continues to put their lives in danger. Does the U.S. have any leverage or credibility with Iraq to force it to act on any of these issues? Ambassador Bolton. Well, on, on the first point, Madam Chairman, uh, on Rouhani as a moderate, I mean, I think his career is it demonstrates he's a man of the regime for 30 plus years. Uh, he wouldn't have been allowed to run for president unless uh, it was clear he would hew to the policies, particularly in the nuclear area, of the Supreme Leader and the Revolutionary Guards. Uh, I watched him in action very closely during the period 2003-2005 when he was uh, Iran's nuclear negotiator. And uh, he was very smooth, charming. Uh, Western European diplomats just loved to deal with him. And he took them to the cleaners day after day after day, negotiating a supposed suspension <laughs> of Iran's enrichment program that was suspended because of the failures of the program itself, difficulties in the uranium enrichment process, and even more importantly, difficulties in the uranium conversion process that uh, allowed Iran during this period of goodwill to fix the problems, then break the suspension, and return to its nuclear weapons program. So I think uh, he, he has shown he knows how to do it once before, and I have no doubt he'd like to do it again. Would he like to see Let Europe me turn to Mr. Uh, Dubowitz for, for maybe Russia, Russia's role or, or Iraq's role. Well, let me talk a little bit. 
let me talk a little bit about this question of his record. I mean, let us remember that he was nuclear negotiator and or the Secretary of the Supreme National Security Council when Iran did not voluntarily or transparently disclose Natanz or Fordo or Isfahan. So it is a record of nuclear deceit. On the issue of sanctions, I mean, I, I support massively intensified sanctions on Iran to bring it to the verge of economic collapse. I think it is the only way to put the Supreme Leader to a fundamental choice. But I think the sanctions that I am, uh, sanctions relief that I am most concerned about are not the humanitarian sanctions that Treasury clarified last week. It was a statement of clarification. They were not new sanctions. But the fact that there have been sanctions on the books that have not been enforced, like the gold sanctions that have given Iran up to $7 billion in just under a year of vital foreign exchange reserves. And it is the unwillingness to entertain new sanctions. It is the non-enforcement of exi existing sanctions, which is sanctions relief. We are already giving Iran sanctions relief, and we are getting no nuclear concessions in return. And finally, on the issue of linkage, I think the issue of linkage is, is very important, Madam Chairman, and that is that the Iranians will try to expand the negotiations to include Syria and their other interests so that they can trade concessions. And we have to be very careful not to link the Syria issue with Iran's nuclear program. On Russia and Iraq, they are both sanctions busters. Uh, we are not enforcing sanctions against either country and they are both in violation of our financial and energy sanctions. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. My time is over. Mr. Deutsch.